Hello APC Mechanics students, uh, today we will solve the past paper of RQ2003, exercise 1. Then skipping the directions and starting with the exercise. The 100 kg box shown above is being pulled along the x-axis by a student. The box slides across a rough surface. Uh -huh. The moment they mention that it is rough, then we have the force of friction. And its position x varies with time according to the equation. x is cubic plus a linear term where x is in meters and t is in seconds. Now why this function is important, from that we can derive all the other variables of motion. And notice that this is cubic, then kinematics in this case breaks down and we need to calculus. Now determine the speed of the box at time t is equal to zero. So let's recall that we have three variables of motion given by x, v and a. So from x to v we derive, from v to a we derive, from a to v we integrate, and from v to x we integrate as well. Now we need to determine the speed and remember that if we derive the position we get the velocity so we might be forced to consider the value or the absolute value of the derivative of this function. Now however let's see so v can be determined from the position using the derivative so v is given by dx by dt which is d by dt of the following function which is 0 0.5 t cube plus 2t and that would be so cubic will become a quadratic which is 3 times 0 0.5 t square we reduce the power by 1 and the linear term would become a constant then that would be 1.5 t square plus 2 notice that here we didn't place any unit because it's being expressed in terms of another parameter now the velocity at t is equal to 0 seconds that would be 1.5 0 to the power of 2 plus 2 which is basically 2 meters per second and notice that the value is given by positive then the speed is given by meters per second. Now in part b determine the following as functions of time t we need to find the kinetic energy of the box and we know that the kinetic energy is given by quadratic term mv square. Now the mass should be replaced and it's given by 100 and the speed that we have determined in part a which is given by 1.5 t square plus 2 and that would be to the power of 2 which is basically 50 multiplied by 1.5 t square plus 2 to the power of 2 and no need to expand this function then the kinetic energy in this case is given by 50 into 1.5 t square plus 2 to the power of 2 and here no need to place any unit because it's being expressed in terms of another parameter now in idea number two we need to determine the net force acting on the box so basically the net force can be determined by Newton's second law which is given by F net is MA and A itself can be determined again using calculus so A is given by dV by dt which is d by dt of 1.5 t square plus 2 now quadratic would become linear then that would be we drop down the power so 3 2 multiplied by 1.5 that would be 3t and the constant would be 0 and in this case the net force acting on the box would be ma which is basically 100 multiplied by 3t and that would be 300t then f naught is given by 300 t and no need to place any in it now the power being delivered to the box we know that the power is the rate of energy and here so the energy that we're talking about is basically the kinetic energy then d by dt of 50 1.5 t square plus 2 to the power of 2 now here why for example I didn't consider the gravitational potential energy because 
we can always set our PE level because it's moving on a level surface to be the to be the level surface passing the, the level passing through the center of mass of the block. So it's only purely kinetic. Now 50 is a constant can be dragged out, so that would be 50 d by dt of the following composite function 1.5 t squared plus 2 to the power of 2. Now how do we derive this? We drop down the power that would be 50 times 2. So let me write it down here. 2 times 50 multiplied by the following function. And we reduce the power of 1, so that would be linear, and we multiply by the inner derivative, which is basically 3t. Now, 100 multiplied by 3, that would be 300t. Multiplied by 1.5t squared plus 2, and no need to expand the following function, then this is the power. And now in part C, we need to calculate the network done on the box and the interval t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2 seconds. Now the network is given by the work done by all the forces. Now here, if you need to consider all the forces, so we have the pull of gravity, the normal push, they don't perform any work. We need to know the work done by the student on the box in addition to friction, and this is a bit challenging. However, if you think about it, always the network can be determined by applying the work energy theorem. So let me say apply work energy theorem. Which states the variation in the kinetic energy is equal to the work done by all the forces, external or not, and we're interested in determining this, then the work done, the network done, is given by the variation in the kinetic energy, kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. This is computed at the final instant, which is given by 2 seconds, and this is initially. Now we have the kinetic energy as function of time, and it's given by 50 into 1.5t squared plus 2 to the power of 2. So kinetic energy initial is given by, and kinetic energy final, that would be the kinetic energy computed at the instant is equal to zero, which is basically 50 into 1.5, zero square plus two to the power of two. And plugging that expression on the calculator, that would be 200, and the assignment of energy is joules. Now we need to compute the final kinetic energy, which is computed at 2 seconds, which is basically 50, multiplied by 1.5, 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 squared, that would be 3,200. And in this case, the net work done on the box during this time interval would be 3,200 minus 200, which is basically 3,000 joules. And now finally, in part D, we need to indicate below whether the work done on the box by the student and the interval t is equal to 0 to 2 is equal to 2 seconds would be greater than, less than, or equal to the answer in part C. Now in part C, that would be the network done by all the forces. And here, if you consider carefully, so as we have stated, the network would be the work done by gravity plus the normal push plus the friction plus the work done by the student. These are zero because we are on a level surface. And now, the work done by the student, now this is negative because we know that the friction opposes motion in this case. So the work done by the student should be greater than the network because this is negative, so we should subtract something from the work done by the student, and finally we get the network. So here our justification would be greater than, and let me state it as the following, the work done
on the box by the student is greater than the network because the network is the work done by the student and friction due to the rough surface which is negative then that's it for me in this video guys see you soon and a new one